Welcome to the Sham Sharma Show. Today on the show, we're going to talk about the Gujarat elections that just got done and dusted. And we're going to talk about, is this a big moral victory for the Congress? Is this a big blow for the BJP? No, it's not. No. BJP won. All right? No, it's not. Let's start the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to a brand new edition of the Sham Sharma Show. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. So the Gujarat elections got done and dusted. And the result of the Gujarat elections is that the BJP won a 99 seats and the Congress won 77 seats. And the rest of the seats went to the NCP and others. And I think it's very important to point out that Mr. Arvind Kejriwal and his Ahmadni party, who were very confident last year in 2016 about the ground support for the Ahmadni party in Gujarat and how well they were going to do in the 2017 Gujarat elections. I think it's very important to point out that the Aam Aadmi Party won what in India is called a ghanta. So like I said before, the BJP won 99 seats. In 2012, they won a tally of 116 seats. So they did lose a few seats. And there was a point during the election where the Congress was actually ahead on 92 seats. And this caused so much panic in the stock market that the Sensex actually opened at 800 points below. And that kind of shows you how much the business sector has faith in the Congress party. But the market swung back around 1,100 points after the BJP edged ahead of the Congress as well. Now, Nitin Gadkari came out and PM Narendra Modi came out after the elections. And they both said that this is a rejection of the divisive, dirty, caste-based politics that the Congress party has run. And this is a acceptance and reinforcing of the Vikas and development-based politics that the BJP has run. And it's true, you know, despite all the GST scares, despite all the demonetization stuff, the urban centers actually still came out and voted quite heavily for the BJP. And the Congress threw everything and the kitchen sink at the BJP in this election and still lost. And it was a very caste-baiting campaign and religion-baiting campaign run by the Congress party, which is, well, you know, it's, it's the bread and butter of the Congress party at this point. They had a broad coalition with OBC, Patidar and Dalit leaders. And it also was very interesting because I don't think for as long as I've been alive, I don't think I have ever seen a Congress leader go to this many temples. The, the Gujarat election had such a big effect on the Congress party that it turned Mr. Rahul Gandhi into a Janeo wearing Shiv Bhakt. I mean, there's that. So a couple of interesting things happened this, in this election as well. So let's look at them. So one of the first interesting things that happened was that the BJP's vote share actually increased this election than last year. So this election, BJP's vote share was 49.1%. And the last year, BJP's vote share was 47.9%. So even though their vote share went up, but they lost more seats. So what happened was the vote productivity of the BJP went down as, compa as compared to Congress, whose vote productivity actually went up. Now, if it was a clearly bipartisan contest, it would have been it would have made more of a difference and it would have given BJP more of a majority. But there were smaller parties that were involved in it as well. And there was a lot of people that voted NOTA as well. So that's something that cost the BJP in this election, too. Now, another very important thing that happened in this election as well is that senior leadership of the Congress, a lot of them lost their seats. For example, Shakti Shin Gohil. Arjun Modwadia, Siddharth Patel, and Indranil Rajguru, they all lost their seats, and these are all big leaders in Gujarat for the Congress Party. On the other hand, new people that were in inducted into the Congress Party and people that were supported by the Congress Party, like Alpesh Thakur, like Jignesh Mevani, like Chotu Bhai Vasava, all of these people ended up winning their seats. So I think there was a bit of a message in there for the Congress Party as well, is that people don't really like their organic leadership as much as they like the new leadership. And interestingly, the situation was actually quite the opposite for the BJP, whereas the new leaders that they got in, the new people that they got in, for example, Ram Singh Parmar, Tejashree Patel, both of these people lost their seats by more than 7,000 votes. And out of the 20 people that the BJP actually took into the party, only nine of them were able to win their seats. I think this is more of a sign for the BJP that they should trust and cultivate more of an organic leadership rather than taking people from outside of the party. Because some people were saying that if the BJP is accusing other parties of corruption and of being bad, why are you taking people from their parties and from those parties into your own party? Now, of course, the usual suspects in the media and, and politics, they came out and said that this is a huge victory for the Congress and this is a huge blow 
for the BJP and this is a rejection of the Gujarat development model and this is a rejection of all the policies that the BJP government has undertaken like GST and demonetization and again all of these things are completely untrue because people are trying very hard to give the credit of this whole performance to Rahul Gandhi and saying this happened because Rahul Gandhi was Congress president and that's not true and people should be pointing out the truth that this happened that Congress lost because Rahul Gandhi was Congress president. Congress got routed in, in Himachal Pradesh because Congress president was Rahul Gandhi. That, that That's what people should be talking about. But they're not talking about that. They're very, very keen to paint Rahul Gandhi as some sort of a winner in this equation, whereas Rahul Gandhi, being Congress president, has lost his first two elections. With people saying, you know, the whole uh, development model has been rejected by the people and GST and demonetization has been rejected by the people, that's not true as well, because the urban centers, which is where you would see the most discontent and the most discomfort when it comes to GST and demonetization, most of the big urban centers have gone ahead and again voted for the BJP in big numbers. And in economics, you have this saying is that there's a difference between good economics and bad economics. Good economics focuses on the long run. Bad economics focuses on the short run. And there's another saying saying that bad economists are often a lot better at convincing people of their policies than good economists are. Because good economics, like I said, focuses on the long run. And bad economists often tell people, well, in the long run, we're all dead. So how does it matter? What matters is what's happening right now. And people tend to get pulled into that a little bit. But again, that didn't happen this year. Urban centers came out and voted strongly for the BJP. And again, there is no moral victory here for the Congress because the Congress threw everything they had at this election, including all that caste baiting they do, including all that religious baiting they do. Doing all of that stuff, they still lost the election. And BJP was able to buck a 22-year anti-incumbency trend, the Pat Patidar agi agitation, the OBC agitation. All of that stuff they were able to buck and still win the, the election. So if the credit goes to someone, it should still go to the BJP. And again, let's look at the whole urban centers and lo let's look at the whole GST and demonetization hit that the BJP has taken. So in the urban centers, Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar, Surat, Vadodara, Rajkot, Jamnagar, and Bhavnagar all voted for the BJP. The only one urban center that the BJP lost was Morbi because it has the sanitary wear and the hardware industry and they needed to move to a more tax-based structure and that's what upset a lot of people there and that's where the BJP paid the price. But overwhelmingly the urban centers came out and voted for the BJP because there's an aspirational middle class in the BJP that is very strongly tied to the BJP's model of development and to Mr. Modi's model of development and they want a better life for themselves and they realize that these policies that the BJP has undertaken is then going to make their life better. But all of this said, it doesn't mean that there is no lessons to be learned here for the BJP as well. Two things can be true at the same time. It is true that this is a big victory for the BJP and not really for the Congress. And it is also true that there is time for introspection for the BJP and the BJP has some lessons that it can learn here. So one of the lessons for the BJP to learn here is that there's a very stark contrast between urban performance and rural performance here for the BJP. So out of the 98 seats, Congress was won around 56 seats and the BJP has won around only 39 seats, which is eight less than their tally in 2012. And two of the rural areas where Congress and BJP pretty much ran neck and neck was Saurashtra and Kutcha. And in these areas, the BJP lost a lot of urban seats to the Congress. It was even worse for the BJP in agri seats because it won only 8 out of 31 agrarian seats. Now in the Saurashtra region the BJP won only 19 out of 48 seats where the agrarian crisis is most acute. The Congress won 28 seats here and this is important because this is something that the people in Saurashtra have had a problem with for a while. They have been complaining about the irrigation setup being incomplete. They have been complaining about the worsening terms of trade for crops like cotton and groundnuts and they've also been complaining about not getting a very good price for their produce for the past few seasons. So there are problems that are present in the rural areas in Gujarat. That's something that the BJP needs to address. And why they need to address this is because if they don't, if they don't work to fix these problems better, these problems are going to crop up in 2018 in a big way because you have elections coming up in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. And these three states are arguably more rural and agrarian than the Gujarat is. So if the Congress was able to exploit these issues so well in Gujarat, you bet they're going to throw everything at these issues in these three states as well. And all of these three states are going to be facing anti-incumbency like Gujarat had. So all of these three states are going to be a little vulnerable. So that's something that the BJP needs to prepare for. And that's something that the BJP needs to work on. The other lesson to be learned here is that the BJP needs a strong 
regional face in Gujarat. They need someone like Fadnavis. They need someone like Manohar Parikar. They need someone like Shivrat Singh Chauhan in Gujarat who can hold their own in election by their own merit. They don't need to parade Mr. Modi around in every single election for 30, 35 rallies, however many he did in Gujarat. They don't need to parade Modi around like that to be able to win an election. Let's think about it this way. If Mr. Modi had only come for about five or six rallies in Gujarat and Mr. Vijay Rupani had done all the other rallies, do you think the BJP would have done as well as they did in this election? I don't think so. But if Mr. Modi had come to Madhya Pradesh for five or six rallies and the rest of the rallies were done by Shivraj Singh Chauhan, I think that the BJP would have still done well there. And that's the difference. That's the problem that the BJP had in Bihar, where they didn't have a strong regional face and a strong candidate for chief minister, and they ended up losing that election. And it's very important that the BJP doesn't make that mistake again in Gujarat, because banking on Mr. Modi to save Gujarat every single election is a very, very bad strategy. Okay, so here's the three important takeaways from this election. Takeaway number one is that the BJP bucked a anti-incumbency trend of 22 years. They got a vote of confidence from their urban voters despite the GST and the demonetization discomforts that it has caused. So credit goes to the BJP definitely there. The second takeaway is that the Congress lost, despite throwing the kitchen sink at it, despite trying all kinds of divisive castes and religion baiting politics that they did. And the third takeaway is that there is some introspection that the BJP needs to do, particularly when it comes to agrarian and rural issues. And that's something that they need to fix because the next three elections coming up in 2018 are going to be focused around that. And part of that last takeaway is that they need a new strong regional face in Gujarat to be able to carry an election on their own merit. All right, and that's the Gujarat election breakdown and recap. I hope you find it useful. I hope you found it enjoyable. And if you liked this episode, if you like this show, please make sure to like the show. Please make sure to share the show as much as possible on social media and make sure to subscribe to the show's YouTube channel as well. And I want to put this question out to you as well now. Like, what do you think of this election? Do you think this is a blow to the BJP? Do you think this is a victory for the Congress? What do you think BJP needs to do in the future when it comes to Gujarat election? And what do you think the BJP needs to do when it comes to the 2018 elections in various states as well? I'd love to hear your opinion. So please get involved in the comment section below and please let me know. All right, thanks for watching today's show. We're going going to be back again on Friday with a brand spanking edition of the good and bad of the week. So make sure you're tuned in for that and make sure you subscribe to the channel for that. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you Friday. And until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you soon.